All right, so in this uh, chapter five, we're gonna talk about the power within the organization that a manager has. So we have two different, con three different concepts here. We have power, authority, and empowerment. And in within these concepts, power essentially is the ability to influence the behavior of others. Um, the authority is that power that is granted to those management positions, okay, or supervisor positions. So the authority is to, the ability to use that power based on the position that you have. Empowerment is where we disperse that or redistribute that power within the different levels of organizations. So for example, empowerment. For guest recovery, our front desk agents um, at a hotel or our servers or bartenders at a restaurant um, might be empowered for guest service recovery up to a certain level. Um, and so rather than the, the servers coming to the manager every single time to say, hey, you know, there's an issue with this guest and, um, and what can we do about it? Well, if this, those team members are empowered to make decisions, then it lessens the time that they have to come and find the manager. Really, what then what happens then is they justify their actions. So at the end of the day, if we need to have some manager's um, approval on a comp, whether it's at a restaurant or in a hotel, we just need to be able to justify why we did that. Um, and as long as it's within that level of empowerment, um, and it's not excessive, okay? So we also need to track how often our team members are using that empowerment. Um, and if it's not excessive, if it becomes excessive, then we need to address that as another additional issue. Um, or we need to identify what those underlying reasons why we constantly are comping food off of the men, off their receipt, or whether we're comping a guest room, what was the underlying reason? And that might lead to an idea for continuous improvement. So we have two different types of organizations, centralized versus decentralized. And centralized just means that all the decision making is at the top of the organization. So you see that here, at the top of the organization that's very centralized, all that decision making. Decentralized means that not all of the decision making happens at the top level of the organization, that, that they kind of delegate and they kind of um, empower their employees at the at various levels of management um, to make those decisions. That's a decentralized organization. So again, centralized is everything at the very, very top and decentralized is down there um, at the different levels. And so let's talk about organization within, um, within a so here's a very basic example of what we call an organizational chart. Um, this is basically designates um, how the organization is structured. So up here, we're definitely gonna have the general manager of the hotel. Um, and then we have the variety of department heads and then their team members that are within each department and each different area that works um, within them. And so, if we have a different types of communication, which we'll talk about in just a few moments in the next video, as far as communication, this right here would be a vertical line of communication, okay? It's going up and down, vertical. Right here, we have what's known as a horizontal line of communication, okay? And so if the GM is sending a message to their supervised, the, the department heads that then give that information down the chain of command, then um, that's a vertical communication. If the different department chairs are speaking to each other to identify how they can work together better, that is a horizontal line of communication. Um, and so when we talk about the chain of command, this is important because this person right here, down here in the center, they don't just automatically go to the general manager. If they go to the general manager, they're skipping this chain of command. They're skipping the step. And so if they have an issue, then this person should go from here up to their supervisor. And then if the supervisor can't handle it, then they would go up and address it with the general manager. 
Okay, and so that's that chain of command that we always want to make sure we're following. All right, so there's two different types of power, um, general types, organizational versus personal power. So let's talk about organizational first. Your positional power is related to the position you hold within the organization, whether they're the general manager, the um, front desk manager, the front desk supervisor, executive housekeeper, executive chef, sous chef, banquet captain, no matter what that different le that level of um, position you have, has a certain power that comes with that, that's associated with that position. The reward power is the opportunity to actually just give rewards, uh, rewards based on performance. And then coercive power is where you can either withhold um, withhold benefits like a pay raise, um, basically kind of giving punishment for um, not achieving the objectives that the, that the employee needs to achieve. Um, the personal power, we have two different types. One is expert and the other is referent. So expert deals with your knowledge, skills, and ability, abilities, your KSAs. And that those knowledge and skills and abilities are things that you have gained, experience that you've gained along your way. And so you have that power because you're able to people, um, you're able to influence people because you have past experience, because they know that you have done this job before and um, they are kind of more respective of that. The referent power on the personal side, it basically results from um, from the admiration that people have for you, the, the respect that people have for you. Um, and so, again, power refers to the overall ability to influence um, individuals. And so, they that referent power really comes from the, uh, the employees and how you work and how you communicate with them to develop those relationships. All right, so our power tactics are essentially how we use those five areas of power that we just discussed in the previous slide. So for consultation, it's an opportunity for us to involve everybody that's going to be involved with the progress um, of the project. And so we want to get ideas from them because they feel like they're part of the solution overall. Reasoning is essentially just telling people the facts. I'm choosing you for this project because you've shown a great dedication to um, your guest services in the past. I'm choosing you for this project because you are always on time and, um, and you are very dedicated to this organization. So just really basically looking at facts and explaining to somebody why you're choosing them for that particular project or that particular um, opportunity. Inspirational appeals when we inspire people to do really well. So I recently watched, um, I'm on this kick where I'm watching um, Kitchen Nightmares and with Gordon Ramsay. And he recently redid a menu for a restaurant and he did this inspirational, he uses inspirational power um, to essentially gave a hundred dollars to every, any employee that first sold every menu item on the new menu. So he put up on the board um, all the menu items uh, with a board that had all the server's names and then each menu item underneath their names. And each time they sold one, they come in and do a check off. And at the end, the first person who can fill up their bingo board essentially was able to win $100. And so he used that power, um, the position that he had as the, you know, as the consultant to um, inspire the people and the servers to, to serve every single menu item. So that way the kitchen has great opportunities to practice making all the items. And then also it gives the servers practice to sell and suggestively sell and upsell. Um, peer pressure is when we enlist individual, individuals peers to support the need um, for that desired behavior. And so at a department meeting, we might ask um, other people that could help in a specific job. We might um, get like, I guess that peer pressure could kind of be like the same thing that, uh, that Gordon Ramsay did, you know, as we're, we're working together 
we we're working with that goal we're inspiring them to earn that hundred bucks but then we also see i pass by and sally has sold almost all of them so it gives me a little bit of pressure to to work harder and be a part of the solution bargaining is where we just essentially <clears throat> if kind of goes towards that reward that ability that power to reward um and coercive power as well but you know if the servers sell every single menu item then they get a hundred dollars uh the first person to do that and then maybe i've also had situations where um well, i've been in a restaurant where if i have to serve appetizers and so the first person to serve five appetizers or every server that actually sells five appetizers during their shift gets a ten dollar gift card to somewhere right and so we have that bargaining if you do this then this is the reward um also bargaining can be a situation where you know if you come in and you work because i'm really short-handed then i'll i'll be sure to give you next weekend off or you can have priority off um, when you're requesting your schedule for the next time so kind of a, a you give a little bit now and this is what you get in the end pulling rank is that very authoritarian style of management it's my way or the highway you do this just because um now that upward appeal is where someone like think about that organizational chart we just talked about and that upward appeal means that i'm going to go above whatever level i have i'm going to go to that next level of authority um, that supports that that decision that i have um, and then that way it gives me a little bit more clout it gives me a little bit more um, justification as to why I am imposing this specific regulation, a specific rule, because it's supported by many layers of management. And so the results as we use this power, obviously our biggest result is that we want to have commitment from our employees. Now the middle of the road is that compliance. They're doing it just to check the box, just to come in, collect a paycheck and go home. Um, and that resistance, if we overuse our power or we overstep those, those bounds, um, then that could lead to a situation where our employees are resistant to our power um, and resistant to the organization and following the guidelines. And so ultimately our ideal is to um, have that commitment from our employees so that they're there giving 120% um, every day that they possibly can.